United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Today, the big picture of one of America's not-so-secret weapons. No scientists are working on complicated mathematical formulas about this one. No engineers are studying blueprints on it. It will never come off an assembly line or be fired from a launching pad. But the range and power of this weapon is tremendous. Even though about all the equipment it needs is a smile and a heart. Right now, wherever American soldiers are assigned, this weapon, friendship, is doing a big task for us as part of the president's concept of building goodwill on a people-to-people -people level of communication. How servicemen, America's ambassadors of goodwill, are winning support for our way of life through the people-to-people -people idea is the subject of today's big picture. Atomic warfare. It is safe to say all thinking people wish the possibility would vanish with the apparent magic of a screen projector running backwards. And thinking people are aware of the role of the armed forces in preserving the peace by stationing combat-ready forces in strategic areas throughout the free world. By no means are we alone. In alliances like NATO, our servicemen work shoulder to shoulder with military forces of the freedom-loving nations of the world. In realistic maneuvers, soldiers, sailors, and airmen of these alliances for freedom learn to work together. But the serviceman learns not only to get along with other men in uniform, his duties often take him abroad, far from home, where he meets at first hand the peoples of the world. Prompted by the President's interest in people-to-people -people contacts, more and more Americans are making friends with the citizens of other lands. From the time he has his overseas orders and even aboard ship, the serviceman receives a painstaking indoctrination in language, customs, and the cultural background of the country where he will be stationed. Our armed forces with a sizable portion of their strength stationed or serving in overseas areas, are ideally situated to play a major role in the job of winning friends for America. At times, unhappily, an unruly nature provides the means. A flood in Japan will bring an anguished plea for on-the-spot American aid. Rendering assistance in local disasters is much appreciated everywhere. But that generally involves the army as units. How about individually, people to people? Since the end of World War II, one of the most important avenues for Americans and other nationals to come to know each other better on a people to people basis has been the employment of non-Americans for support functions to the army overseas. In South Korea and Japan, for example, thousands of Koreans and Japanese have been working closely with and under the supervision of Americans. A relatively small cadre of Americans, serving primarily as instructors or supervisors, can, after a carefully planned program of training, rely on the national personnel for a variety of tasks. Driving a vehicle is only one out of many. Moreover, the cost of transporting manpower from the United States is eliminated. Use of this large reservoir of locally available workers cuts down the number of troops needed for support area jobs. Working under good conditions, treated equitably, the non-American employee gains an intimate picture of the fair play attitude of the individual American on the job. 
Post-war Germany, 1945. In the summer of that year, amid the ruins and rubble of a shattered nation, children were hungry, not only for food, but for recognition, gentleness, friendship. These first efforts to win over the youth of a defeated nation were spontaneous gestures on the part of our troops. Here, as all over the world, American soldiers could not, would not ignore the wistful appeal of children in need. The appeals in those shattered days after the war were many, not only from children and not only for the physical necessities. The war the Nazis unleashed had torn asunder the spiritual fabric of Germany. It too needed rebuilding, a helping hand. Church bells had been melted down in the frantic days of the Nazi defeat. In many towns, army units aided in the reconstruction of a church, the securing of another bell, it would toll again for all, German and American, now working together for a peaceful future. But inevitably, the future implies youth, and the major effort during the German occupation was aimed at the children, primarily by the German Youth Activities Program, in which the American soldier played an important role. GYA was designed to organize voluntary assistance to the children by the German people themselves. In the process of working and playing together, they learned respect for others and how to govern themselves in a the democratic way. GYA centers soon became the most popular places in many German towns for the younger generation. On free afternoons and evenings, they became the gathering places for children of all ages, many of them working on their hobbies. Girls sewing up additions to their wardrobe, and thousands taking advantage of the many opportunities for learning practical skills. Sports, here as everywhere, provided a wonderful opportunity for American and German to come to know, to respect each other better in a relaxed atmosphere. Baseball, little known in Germany before the war, is rising in popularity thanks to the missionary work of servicemen on their off-duty time. An activity like a soapbox derby, for example, will lure the German youngsters from all parts of the country. Yes, in the years after the war, ranging down to the present, the servicemen have gone out to meet the people with emphasis on the children. Not exactly a mile a minute, but it's go man go all the way. Hail to the winner, no break, just a nice soft bed of straw. A sports car rally in today's Germany, in a way the post-war program of GYA, with its emphasis on activity, was a precursor of what is drawing together American and German. Sports and hobbies have proven again and again to be bridges to international friendship. In a typical road event, about half the participants will be German, the balance American servicemen or civilian employees. A real contest of skill in handling a powerful automobile at high speeds. The cornering ability of car and driver is tested by carefully spaced bales of hay. MPs aid German police in keeping the track route clear. 
sports car racing is extremely popular, and American drivers are invariably invited to participate in the rallies of local clubs. The car with the best time will take first prize, but the real winner is German-American friendship. Early Sunday morning, the sound of gunfire cuts through the air, but no alarm. It's a skeet shooting range with German and American hunters testing their aim. A difficult sport demanding a good eye and top-notch muscular coordination. From a nearby shack, the targets are arched into the air. But how skillful they are, that's not the important thing. Contact, a chance to observe the person from another country at informal close range, to talk his language even if it is a foreign language. Right there is the meaning of people to people. And in the nearby lodge, they will sit and talk for hours, German and American. The subject will start with hunting, but who knows who really cares where it will go from there. That's a, a special German uh, gun with uh, three barrels. We call it a drilling. Drilling. Uh, you could better see it when they make it in parts. What's the maximum range of that gun? It's, uh, the range of the uh, rifle barrel is about uh, between 250 and 300 meters. Well, what's the caliber of it? Uh, the caliber is 7 by 57. And 57, that's equivalent to one of our 30-odd six. Okay, I can show you that over here. Yeah. But what is this? What high school? That's a Yachthorn. Somehow, difficulties of language are overcome as men of goodwill always manage to get a message across. But language knowledge is a priceless boon toward the close contact embodied in the people-to-people -people program. And the army is going all out to facilitate linguistic training for soldiers and dependents. Over 33,000 dependent children in France and Germany are learning French or German. You remember I told you about St. Martin's Day when all the Germans <coughs> they walk out with their lanterns. Yeah? You remember? Good. So, here come my come. Come on. Do it. Nein, Moment, Moment. You need to come. Come, Alf. Happily, the language barrier does not extend into the world of music. So often described as the international one, people forget how it really is. In Germany, music is woven into the routine of daily living. Communities like Kaiserslautern, near Heidelberg, will have a civic symphony orchestra practicing one night a week. Talented American servicemen often take part in their off-duty time. Composed mainly of German businessmen, retired and active, 
The orchestra is an amateur organization playing for pleasure only. The rehearsal ends. Time now for a critique and some good talk about a favorite subject. The interest that binds them. Music, of course. Well, I was going to school in America. Maryland, but... No, I've asked them about it. Every time I've seen them, they can't find anything. They ordered the music from Frankfurt and can't seem to get it. I have a copy of Hoedown, which is also from... That's Rome. good, isn't it? That's very good, yes. Do you know yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Very fast. Right down. Is it the very end of the stroke? Is right uh, down. Here. Here is where, where I want the sound. <laughs> the studio? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but, but, yes, but I have to go to something in Frankfurt. Oh. Ach so. Yes. Sie haben uh, leider nicht. Aber das ist schön, dass Sie spielen. Das ist wunderbar. Ja, das ist sehr gut, weil wir teils hier spielen und dann teils in Rusland. In Zürich? Ja, ja. Uh, the longest the concert Sie haben in... Uh, Very often, German civilians are invited to army service clubs to participate in activities of a broad popularity. No question, the appeal of bingo transcends national boundaries. B9. B9. I28. E28. B12. B12. B, three, under the B, three. Und nochmals unter N, 37. N, 37, and we have a bingo. Ihre letzte aufgerufene Nummer war N, 37, und ich glaube, wir haben ein Bingo. Open house affairs at a service club with activities like bingo serve to bring together German and American in an atmosphere of informality, all leading to a closer relationship of people to people. Individual servicemen realize their responsibilities as American ambassadors of goodwill and make special efforts to make German guests feel right at home. You got to talk. Good morning. Hello, Fred. How are you? Yes, Frau Scholl. Danke. Good. How was your luck tonight? Bingo. Nicht good. Nicht good. But I, I hope, I hope, I have the luck next next time. Oh, uh, better luck next time. Huh? Okay. It works the other way too. When the Germans are the hosts, they make the Americans feel right at home. In all their finery, they're down at the station to meet the troops arriving for a holiday weekend. Communities will often invite servicemen to come visit for a weekend and few army men will pass up the chance to meet the people on home grounds. Hospitality is ladled out to the visitors with open-handed generosity. It's a weekend of good eating. Chatting over family snapshots. And how do you suppose tomatoes will be next year? Then, before you know it, it's Sunday afternoon. A round of goodbyes and Auf Wiedersehen. Late afternoon, another town. Four servicemen at the local hospital. 
The receptionist knows them all very well. She should. Their outfit has been donating blood at the rate of four volunteers a week ever since mid-December of 1957. There have been over 70 volunteer donors so far, with some going back four and five times. It's kind of a routine by now. Nobody has to tell them what to do. Nobody has to tell an army man the priceless value of blood banks. The way they look at it, they're doing some good in two directions. The hospital needs the plasma, and the money paid them for it goes for a very worthy cause. A nearby orphanage, the Kinderheim Lindenhof. Five dollars per man for one half pint of blood. The money once went for buying toys, but now the money they are collecting by voluntary donations of blood is helping defray the cost of a new badly needed addition to the Kinderheim. Afternoon of a visiting day moves by to the accompaniment of children's voices as they play along happily with some of the toys the army men had brought on previous visits. 